Hi, my name is Jonathan Hopp. This is 10 Minute Go, and it's been quite some time since I've made some videos. My apologies, but I've been moving back and forth from China, and that has been taking a lot of time. So I'm back in the United States. I'm here. I'm ready. Let's get started with the timer now. All right, today's topic is uh, quite a difficult topic for most Go players. It's Moyos, all right? Moyos are territorial frameworks. And I'm going to use that term territorial framework. I know it's a little bit of a mouthful. But I would prefer to use English terms rather than uh, Japanese, Korean, or Chinese terms. If you go up to someone in Japan, you say Moyo. It just basically means like shape or like pattern or like figure of something. So it's just like the shape of something. It doesn't actually like me have like any sort of like esoteric meaning, all right? But in terms of our talk, I'm going to use the term territorial framework. All right, well, what, what am I talking about? A moyo or framework in Go is essentially any time you have a large area that is under your zone of control. So we have a game like this, all right? And so let's look at black, let's look at white, all right? Black has, well, I mean, black is pretty big, right? Black has these stones facing on the outside. He has a stone here, two stones over this way. This area, all in here, all right, around the middle of the board, on the right side, on the bottom side, you can kind of feel, you can look at it, that there's a large zone of control where there are no white stones, and it will be difficult to connect to white stones. The entire center is under Black's influence, all right? When you hear strong players say influence, this is what they mean, all right? They mean essentially that if anything happens in this part of the board, Black is going to have the advantage because he has more stones there. Not only does Black have more stones, they're facing in the direction where things are going to happen. If you look at White, let's look at it. So White has all these third line stones and the second line stone. All right, and he's got these low stones over here. But this territory is assuredly White. So, you know, Black isn't going to come in and play um, something like this, right? This, this doesn't make any sense. This doesn't make any sense. This doesn't make any sense. None of those moves make any sense. So, because they'll just die automatically. So, all of that is white's territory. So, in exchange, black has moves on the outside, which gives them this large territorial framework. Now, it's a framework because it's not your territory. And, I mean, I, I know exactly where you were when I was a beginning player. I thought this too. Territorial frameworks are not territory. They're just frameworks. They're just something you're going to, in the future, make territory with or use to your advantage. Now, this looks really big. And what Black is basically saying to White is like, listen, if you don't do something, like let's say he, like White were to continue to just take territory, right? Black can start making a really big center territory. Now we have to ask ourselves the question, is White's territory in these corners going to be bigger if Black takes this entire box? And the answer is clearly no, right? Black's box is going to be huge. And White's territory while solid, right, while solid, is not going to outmatch blacks. So there's going to be a lot of fighting on white's part to try to make this big area to get into it before it turns into territory. So let's, like, look at some real uh, game examples of how this works in, you know, how uh, in a real game. This formation on the right is called the three-linked star formation. You'll hear the word san ren okay, That's Japanese. San is three. Ren is linked or, like, chained together. Se is, in this case, star. Se san ren se, all right? Three linked star formation. And it's three high stones, so they're all fourth line stones. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Okay, it's fourth line stones, and they're influential stones. We talked about the difference between territory and influence earlier. Now, white approaches, black place here. It's important uh, to know how to respond to this. There's lots of different responses. You could play a high move here, you could do all manner of pincer on the other side, there's all sorts of stuff you can do, all right? We want to make sure we respond correctly. A lot of beginners will see a move like this, they'll say, okay, well, I want to build the right, which is a perfectly legitimate thing to say, I want to build the right, I'm going to kick white. Remember, when you punch someone, do they just sit there and go, oh, you punched me, that's cool, I'll just sit here. No, when you punch someone, they respond probably by punching you back or defending themselves. So if you punch right, white right in the face, then white's going to defend himself. Now, you want to extend here, because you don't, like, if you play somewhere else, then white's going to play something like this. And this looks, this is starting to get really kind of terrible, because now white's very strong on the outside. So you want to continue building the right side, a worthy goal. However, let's look at the end result. White is very comfortable at the top. 
right? You attacked white, but the result is that white made a very comfortable group, right? This is more than enough territory to make two eyes if these three stones were to ever get into trouble. And you still haven't really fixed this corner invasion. Okay, so we're gonna go over some corner invasions in a later lecture, but for right now, this stone does not dead, right? You, you're not killing this stone. So, since that's the case, this is kind of a move that's just sort of like, it looks like you're attacking, but the, after the result is you have more problems in the end than when you started with. Why not, why not, if you wanted this move, why not just directly take the move, right? Don't do anything fancy, just take the move. Okay, fourth line stone, all fourth line stones for continuing our strategy of making a large framework. Okay, no problem. White extends. White doesn't have to do this, but I could just do like this, all right? There's all sorts of strategies. I'm just going over some basic ones. We're still in the double digit Q area. Uh, that's what this lesson's aimed for. So we have this move here at K16, which is fine. And now Black is going to continue his Moyo strategy, all right? So he's continues building his territorial framework as long as he can. And now we have a cornerstone here at A with two wings, and both of them are fourth line stones. So that means that we're really starting to build a bigger box. So White says to himself, well, Black's starting to get big, and I go second. So if he gets too big, I'm going to just lose the game because he's going to have more points than I do. So I gotta try to control his box. So why can build a box of his own if he's confident, right? Why can build a box like this and we can continue on the game like this? And I would not say that anyone's lost yet, all right? I wanna make sure, make sure it's clear. I would not say that white or black is losing. But if white feels that, hey, this is starting to look a little bit scary, white can start to undercut the black stone by playing a third line stone and saying, listen, what we're going to do is I'm going to try to make this in the territory, and this is a lot of space, right? I may be able to invade you later, but I can make a lot of territory here. So I want you to think about it now, right? You're, you're thinking about your territorial framework. You're thinking about how to expand it, how to make it bigger, how to make it stronger, all right? How to make it so that if someone invades you, they'll be captured, all right? I want you to pause the video and think about it for a second. How would you play as black here? All right, so a really good move would be to just do the knight's move here, all right? So we're just kind of floating over this way, right? We have our moyo is just going up and up and up and up and up. Our framework is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, all right? We, we don't want to do things like this, all right? This iron pillar is, yes, it's defensive. Yes, you're trying to take this for territory, and I, I applaud you. But the problem is white gets this move, and now his box... If we think of this as a box, right, this little rectangle here, it's starting to get bigger at expense of yours. So if you were to even play, like, I've seen in some games people play like this um, for double-digit cues, and now White's box is looking bigger. There's no reason White's box should be this big. He doesn't deserve that. So defensive moves like this are kind of counterproductive. We instead play like this. And now I know exactly what you're thinking. You're saying, well, I built, I'm playing all these stones on the outside, and I've got... Uh, this big framework, but but what if my opponent invades me? I can't. What if I can't kill their group? Stop trying to kill their groups. In Go, it is very difficult to kill an opponent's group if they have enough space. It is very difficult to kill things. They really have a way of coming back. So if White plays here, for example, you're fine. Don't get flustered or angry about this. Simply cover it. All right. If your opponent invades then you, you, what your opponent wants is, of course, either live on the side or come out, right? Live on the side or come out. Well, he has two options. Let's get rid of one of those options, all right? Let's get rid of one of them. You want to live or come out? Well, you can't come out anymore. So white has to, of course, live, right? So in which case, actually, uh, white can go this way, yep. Okay, white can play here, try to make some space. Now, white is probably alive here, all right? White is probably going to live. It'll probably it'll make two eyes. But so what? This is maybe five points in the end. And you have all this lovely, nice thickness, and this is very strong. Now, this area, which before, I would never say that this area was, any, was Black's territory. This area is under Black's influence. But if we go further, I would say this is going to probably turn into some territory, especially if Black gets a later some moves to kind of reinforce the corner, then this starts to get very big and solid because this wall is tough, all right? Once you make a really solid wall, that framework coalesces in the territory. And as you continue to play, you'll see what I mean. All right, so what I want you to do in your next game is try to build a big framework. 
look at the different parts of the board, the big parts of the board. Try to make big boxes as deep as you can. And you'll notice that you'll start to have more control of the game. You'll be dictating the flow of the game, not your opponent. Well, I hope this was helpful. We're going to talk about territorial frameworks more in the future. I'll see you next time.